Hi, my name is EJ Massa. I recently got a good deal on a Weber Summit charcoal grill. I've been looking for a Kamado style grill for quite some time, especially since the weather in New England can turn windy and cold on a dime, ruining a perfectly good barbecue day. I looked at a Kamado Joe, the Big Green Egg, Char Grill, or Acorn, but then I saw a brand new Summit charcoal grill on eBay for a thousand bucks for local pickup, and I jumped on it. I wasn't planning on getting this guy, but it was too good a deal to pass up. Unlike other Kamados on the market, which use ceramic to insulate their grills, this uses two pieces of stainless steel with a pocket of air in between. This means in theory it's pretty efficient, but the temperature is also easier to control, especially if you overshoot. A grill like the Acorn uses some oven insulation in between the pieces of steel instead of the air like the Summit Charcoal, so you get another problem of it being too efficient, so during low and slow temperatures, you can cause the charcoal to smolder unpleasantly. So if I were to guess, and I'm no science man, I'd say the Weber Summit is probably less efficient than a ceramic Kamado, but you sacrifice some of that efficiency for control. And it's leagues more efficient than the one sheet of sheet metal that you get from the original Weber kettle. Now I know what you're thinking, EJ Massa, I can get a 22 inch Weber kettle for a hundred bucks. Why well, pay 10 times that amount for, you know, whatever the heck this thing is? Great question, voice in my head. Great question. Let's find out. First of all, the construction on this thing is awesome. It's much bigger than I imagined it as well. Here's a banana for scale. Here's a Pit Barrel Jr. and a Weber 22 inch for scale. Here's an alcoholic for scale. Opening it up is a breeze. It feels all smooth and solid with an impressive amount of grill grate space. And the hinge is very impressive. It makes lifting the lid super simple. There's a nice gasket on the lid. Seems like a nice gasket. I'm just gonna pet this gasket. It has a 24 inch grate with hinges on the side and this cutout for accessories. Accessories that I'll never use or buy. I think I'd rather not have the center come off. Just have it all one piece. One neat thing about the Summit is that you can have this charcoal grate lower for smoking and also put it up higher for more direct heat. Underneath that grate is the Snapjet Igniter and the standard Weber one-touch charcoal fan, which works like every other Weber charcoal grill. You know, you pull this thing and it sweeps the blades around to clean the ash. Very simple. In fact, it seems to be exactly the same system used on performer grills, maybe with the addition of this marking telling that you're in the smoking configuration. Other than that, it's the same construction. It's so similar that it's held with some fake leg nubs, just like the 22 inch. Except, except with this, they don't do anything. Seems like a strange cost cutting measure for such a premium style grill. A couple other things that seem cost cutting are the cheap plastic back wheels, which don't really match the robustness of the rest of the grill. There's one front caster wheel, which is, which is fine, but the back wheels are just something you'd see on the $100 grills. The top vent also feels a bit flimsy and thin to me, but it does flip open like this for maximum airflow. And I'm assuming this dome thermometer is going to be very bad. It looks big and impressive, but probably bad. I've never met a built-in dome thermometer that worked right. This is why you invest in an excellent digital thermometer like the Thermoworks Smoke. So those are small details in the construction I'm disappointed with. And for a price tag of $1,500, you'd think they wouldn't cheap out on them. Cost-cutting measures are expected for grills under $500, but for ones like this, a luxury grill? Not so much. I'm shocked Weber would be so cheap. If, you know, if I took Weber out to the Outback Steakhouse, i get him a wallaby darn and a bloomin' onion. And you know what? That'd make it rain coconut shrimp. I'm not really sure where this analogy was going, but I could sure use a bloomin' onion right now. You can hang your tools on this thing, although tools that don't have strings on them, they're a little awkward when you place them in there. One thing to note is there's a version of this grill with a side table for 500 more dollars, but <laughs> that's a ripoff. You can get a table anywhere. You can just put the food on the ground. The ground is nature's table. The Summit comes with this heat deflector plate, which, just like the grill itself, has a pocket of air between two sheets of metal, and it's hinged so you can place more charcoal in there. It's nice that it comes with this, and it's not nickel and diamond me by making me buy a piece of ceramic separately. Here's an unrelated picture of the big green egg. You can store the deflector thing here. The instruction manual said I could. See? Okay guys, let me talk to you about fire. I mean the Snapjet ignition system. There's a little thing on the side here. You can screw in a standard issue camping propane tank, turn the knob all the way to the right, and 
You can easily light your charcoal with this. I don't know why, but there's something that seems lazy and unmanly about it. So it's right up my alley. Let me take this guy for a spin. I wonder what my first cook should be. <laughs> of course, it has to be smoked tofu and lentils. Nah, I'm just f***ing with you. It's gonna be ribs. And here's a whole big ol' spare ribs with the breastbone from Aldi's. And to prepare them, I'm gonna remove the membrane in three annoying strips, just cause I'm good at this. There was some fat here, so I shaved it off. And finally, I cut off this flap at the end. It was not an important flap. I'm gonna season it simply with just some Killer Hogs AP rub, which is basically just salt, pepper, and garlic. It's a MSG, but don't tell anybody. I'm also gonna run a tiny experiment and see how long a chimney filled with lump charcoal lasts in this thing. Poured it into the cooker, turned on the snap jet, let it run for about five minutes, turned off the gas, placed the deflector in there, the grill grate, and a little probe to monitor the temp. Once it gets to around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, I close the bottom vent to the smoke setting and the top one to about one fourth open. I'm aiming for roughly 225 degrees Fahrenheit, although the cooker quickly got to 310 Fahrenheit, but you know, that's fine, it's fine. Uh, it's a little more efficient than I'm used to. Uh, let's just put the meat on. I put some foil over the deflector plate to catch the juices and gently put this huge chunk of meat on. And it fits perfectly. You'll notice I didn't put any wood chunks in there, and that's just because I'm getting a feel for the device. I'll screw around with wood later. And I will screw around. I usually make sweet style pork ribs, but I think I'm gonna go more the savory route with a Texas mop sauce. I mixed up a mop sauce, which I got from Meathead's book, with the following ingredients. I didn't think I needed to get B-roll of me putting each ingredient in, so here's just a shot of me putting in some ketchup to prove that I can put ingredients into a pot, and just, I don't know, simmer it and stuff. I'm a good chef. I bought this paintbrush for a dollar, and I'll periodically paint the ribs with this sauce. Perhaps every hour or so. After an hour and a half, the temperature dropped closer to what I wanted it to be, which is quite amazing. With ceramic, it'd be a little tougher to adjust an overshoot and I painted on a layer of that delicious homemade mop sauce. Mmm, beautiful. Oh, and just like I predicted, the dome temperature is off like 40 degrees for my digital thermometer. So I let the meat do its thing, and every hour I applied more sauce, eventually turning it over at the three hour mark and mopping the other side, and continuing that process until the six hour mark, and things are almost done. I can feel it. Just a couple more layers of sauce. Mostly to get slow motion B-roll to make you jealous. Oh yeah. Look at that. Seven hours in and it's a beautiful, brilliant mahogany. I used the skewer to test the tenderness and it goes through and out with no hassle. So we're done here. It's, it's way too big for this Pyrex. What an oversight. Time to carve this bad boy up. I'll try me one of these ribs. Wonderful smoke ring, which is, which is important. Very important. Can you see how important it is? Let's see how they turned out. Mmm, tangy, savory. And just the right amount of salt. A symphony of flavors. And extremely juicy. Almost like exploding with juice. Maybe it was just a lucky piece of pork. Or it could have been the mop sauce in the low and slow. Like I said, I usually prefer a sweet rib with lots of barbecue sauce, but these were really good. A nice alternative. As far as my charcoal efficiency test, that one chimney of charcoal lasted about five hours. So then I had to add in more, and luckily I could with the little hinge in the deflector plate, which was really handy. So in conclusion, one standard Weber chimney on a 80 degree day going at 225 degrees Fahrenheit lasts about five hours. But just one cook isn't enough to get a definitive feel for the grill, so I'm gonna do another one. And this time I'll do a cook suggested by Red Cow alum Keith Sadik for boring salmon. He actually made this suggestion like a year ago, and I'm finally getting around to it today, but oh, Oh, come on, Keith. Don't give me that. Give me that classic Keith Sadik furrowed brow as featured in Red Cow Entertainment's hit classic, Sexually Frank. I'll get right to it. Got some wild caught salmon from Costco. I'll pour some olive oil on them and season them simply with just salt and pepper. That's how I like my salmon. Boring. I don't like to complicate things or make them exciting. Don't worry, Keith. It'll be nice and boring. I promise. I'll even season this weird silver side, which is weird. I have my summit coming up to temp with some lump charcoal. When it hits around 225 degrees Fahrenheit, I close down the vents. 
I added a chunk of oak through those handy hinged openings, and I put the salmon on the cooker when the temp reached 325 degrees Fahrenheit. 30 minutes later, I checked the temp, and actually it was a little bit overdone. But, you know, it's still very yummy looking, so it's time to take it off and have a sample. Super flaky. Very moist. Let me take a bite of this. Oh, yes. Nice and gentle, with a delicious, oaky aftertaste. Sufficiently boring, which is how I like my fish. I hope I made you happy, Keith. He seems happy. So I used the grill in the smoking configuration, but I'd be remiss if I didn't use it in the direct heat configuration. And it just so happens, I found some awesome steaks at Costco to try out. I've really never seen anything like the marbling on these steaks from Costco, so I'm assuming it's a mistake. It looks like a Wagyu steak. So let's see, I've made a pig ghost, a fish ghost, and now a cow ghost. That's three different animals in one episode. I wonder what else I could make into a ghost. Better watch out, guys. I'm coming for you next. I'll season the steak simply with the salt, pepper, garlic rub, and then add some fresh, coarsely ground black pepper, making sure to get all sides. I think I'll do the reverse sear technique utilizing these charcoal baskets that came with the grill. Maybe someday I'll upgrade to the low profile slow and sear. I bet it'd be awesome in this grill. But for now, I'll add some briquettes to these much flimsier charcoal baskets made by Weber. I'll add on the grate, close down the vents. I'm aiming for around 325 degrees Fahrenheit and eh, that's close enough. I'll add on the amazing looking steaks and probe them for perfect doneness. You'll also notice I added some not as amazing New York strips, which I just had lying around and I just wanted to cook up. Add on some oak chunks and this grill will make everything delicious in no time. The anticipation is killing me. I'm so curious how these beautiful marble steaks will come out. When the internal temp got to 130 degrees, I took off the prime steaks. The New York strips were thicker and not quite done, so I let them continue cooking, and I opened the top vent all the way to get the charcoal nice and hot for searing. Then I transferred over the steak to be kissed by fire. Did I say kissed by fire? <laughs> no. This is more like an intense makeout session with fire. Just look at the beauty. Let's get some makeout music in here. Ooh, yeah. And that's all there is to it. They look perfect, at least on the outside. But it's time to see if they're as good as they look, and if the marbling makes a difference, or if it was all just a lie. Oh, it's got a nice jiggle and bounce to it. There we go. Edge to edge perfection, and wonderfully medium rare. And now for the obligatory taste test. Oh. It's buttery, even though I didn't use butter. <laughs> Unreal tender. Melts in your mouth. Teeth? Don't eat them. Just a hint of oak flavor and the all-purpose rub enhances the flavor just the right amount. So how do I think the Weber Summit performs? Well, I feel like I'm in total control. Usually with my other sheet metal smokers, I'm at the whim of the weather and that can drastically alter the way my cook goes. Not with the Summit. If I dial in a temp, I usually hit it and if I overshoot, I can easily compensate. I've never had this much control outside of, you know, just like an oven dial. And if I wanted something like that, there's an opening for one of those BBQ fan controllers. But I'm super happy with the construction outside of the few little gripes I had, like the construction of the wheels and other cost-cutting measures. I even like the snap jet starter, even though I didn't think I would, but I did. It's so, so easy. Just lazily pour in some charcoal, turn it on for five minutes, and then you're ready to smoke. Overall, it's a very solid grill. It feels and controls like a premium grill. As far as price goes, I paid $1,000 for that, and that, that feels about right. $1,500 asking price seems like a bit much, especially since there's so much competition out there and cheaper options, which also perform great. I can't speak to the longevity of such options, but they are out there, and people might pick those options over the Summit. But I love it, and it's exactly what I was looking for in a Kamado-style grill. There's tons of grill space, it's um, hefty, but not heavy, and you got that control. I'd recommend it if you can find a good price on it, which I know I was lucky enough to get. The real test will be how it performs in the winter months, so I might do a follow-up video that covers that. So please follow me on Instagram. Just search EJ Massa or EJ Space Massa. One of those will take you there, I'm sure. My username is EJ Massa. I'm EJ Massa. Now, if you excuse me, I see a bunch of animals. I have to turn to ghosts. Until next time, bye.